A study by Cambridge University researchers mapping the evolutionary path of the virus as it spread from Wuhan, China, found three distinct strains in different parts of the globe. Dr. Peter Forster and his team analyzed 160 genomes from patients and found that the strain in Wuhan mutated from an earlier version. So what I wanted to do in this research, together with my colleagues, is to uh, identify the original viral genome, the original viral genome type, because the virus mutates, it changes, um, and uh, you get variants arising, and, and which is the original one. Instrumental in this is the GISAID database. So this is run by uh, a, a German ministry, and people from across the world, especially uh, from East Asia and China, have contributed their genomic information into this database. The three distinct strains were dubbed A, B, and C. Forster and his team found that the closest type of COVID-19 to the one discovered in bats, type A, was present in Wuhan, but not the city's predominant virus type. My background has mainly been to trace uh, prehistoric human migration through human molecules. So we, we use and have developed software methods to reconstruct prehistoric molecules which no longer exist. And if you apply that, you find out that uh, a, a location in the network, which we've called type A, is the original type that would have infected humans. Then it would mutated and change into a type B. This type B was then the first genome to be picked up in Wuhan when the disease became apparent. Um, and so researchers might be forgiven for thinking at the time that B is the original type, um, but actually it's, it's not. It's type A, which in Wuhan is only a minority type, but B has become the majority type during the outbreak. Um, and that has mutated further into C. Now, the C type is not found in the early phase of the outbreak in, uh, in China. It is found outside. For example, it's well represented in Singapore. Researchers believe the information could be used to map the source of outbreaks and where they might occur in the future. It could even lead to differences in the clinical presentation of the disease and be used to design treatments and vaccines.